Hey folks, how's it going? This is uh, Yakin with Nick, and I am Nick Hazelton. And uh, let's get into it. Let's let's yak about uh, mushroom foraging. I uh, I've been doing mushroom foraging for a little while. Uh, probably, yeah, well, I don't know. Um, my mom's been into chanterelle hunting since I was, oh, I don't know, maybe I was like 12. So maybe it's been about seven years or something like that. And so we used to go always go hunt chanterelles. chanterelles. Chanterelles are pretty easy mushrooms to identify. They're pretty easy to tell from other ones. They don't have very many uh, lookalikes. So anyway, we used to do that. And then uh, as I got interested in um, being more self-sufficient um, and, and getting interested in agriculture and also interested in psychoactive substances, um, I got turned on to mushrooms and... Um, I, I got really interested in, in learning about them. So I, I learned quite a bit. I spent uh, the last two seasons pretty heavily um, studying. I mean, like two two years ago was probably when I really studied. I got my first mushroom ID book and I, and I really learned it. And then last year I was going pretty hard and learning about mushrooms. And this year I'm not doing as much learning, but I'm, I'm as much as just kind of maintaining my... Um, previous knowledge that I have. So I I don't want to say that I'm any kind of real expert, but uh, I do know more than most people. And I have done a lot of reading um, and a lot of talking to people who are experts. Um, so I, I think I'm pretty knowledgeable and, and I'm, I think I'm knowledgeable enough to, to be able to talk about some basics of, of mushroom foraging. So today I wanted to go over um, what mushroom foraging is, why you would do it, um, and just some other things. I want to give you guys some tips on how you could find some and just um, some things to look out for. And yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll try to cover pretty much as, as much as I can. I don't, I, I'm sure I'm leaving something out of this presentation that could be in. Um, this is my first time really coming up with this. I wrote my notes today. So who knows? But I think this is pretty complete. So first of all, what is what is a mushroom? And, and why are we foraging it? Uh, a, a mushroom is the fruiting body of a fungus. And a fungus is, it's like there's in all the kingdoms, or what is it? Not animal kingdom. Yeah, 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 yeah. Animal kingdom, plant kingdom. Yeah, yeah. That's how we, you know, the organization of how living things are split up. There are three kingdoms, I believe. Maybe there are other ones. Like bacteria is maybe their own thing. I don't know what the hell it is. Um... There are fungus, plants, and animals. So those three, and, and fungus uh, are decomposers, so they break down organic material, and, and it tends to be, well, I mean, funguses can be anything. I, I believe molds are types of fungi. Um, there's all kinds of stuff. There's slime molds. There's all kinds of weird stuff. And then there's um, there's mushroom-producing fungus. And these um, mushrooms are just, uh, they're the fruiting body of this fungus that is growing in the ground on organic material and harvesting it and it just it throws it out like a like kind of like an apple on a tree it sprouts and it, it releases spores which are the equivalent of seeds you know so the spores go and they find a, a, a suitable place and they start growing into I, I don't know what the the um I don't really know the reproduction process of, of fungi, fungi, but uh, it, I know it involves spores and they have to get to the right place. I don't know if they have to like find another spore or some shit. I don't know. Uh, but they, you know, if they start growing mycelium, which is, which is what the fungus is actually made up of. It's a, it's a kind of a, yeah, it's called a mycelial network and that's what's in the ground. That's what's actually, um, getting the nutrients from whatever they're decomposing. Sometimes mushrooms are living symbiotically with, um, with plants, but most of the time they're, they're breaking down dead ones or, um, they're parasitic on, um, living ones. I don't know about most of the time, but a lot of the time I don't think that they are, um, symbiotic. And then the the mushroom is yeah it's it's just that fruiting body so you it it's not even really it's it, like the only purpose it has is to get out spores that's what the purpose is um, there's nothing else really to it but um, 
mushrooms are pretty interesting things. They're, um, I think they're, a lot of people are just really scared <laughs> of mushrooms, especially in Western culture, because there are, um, there are deadly ones. There are dangers with, um, go, you know, trying to define mushrooms. But um, I think that they're, I mean, I think that's just overblown. The, the fear is kind of ridiculous. If you spend just a little bit of time learning mushrooms, it's pretty easy to be safe. Um, of course, there are definitely people who take risks and uh, there are people who, who end up getting sick. You know, it, it happens. It absolutely, absolutely happens. I believe there was a family that... Um, Oh, I'm not sure they died, but they, they all got sick at least. I, I hope they didn't die, but they might have this, just this year, um, I think in Washington, but I'm not sure. I don't remember. But, it, you know, it's dangerous, but I do think that it's it's it, it's not um, it's not that much to be worried about if, if you know enough. And, and if you don't know enough, then, yeah, I would be concerned. I wouldn't be just eating anybody's mushroom that they give you. Um, I certainly wouldn't eat anything that I wouldn't know, you know, what it was. But um, I think that there's a lot of benefits in mushrooms, and there, there, there's some interesting ones that I, I think are really, um, really important for somebody who is, who is um, vegan or, or vegetarian. There's some nutrients that are very hard to get from plants, like B12, and um, I believe it's hard to get vitamin D. I'm not sure. I don't know anything about vitamin D. I know that you can get it in the fat cells of, of um, animals who have been in sunlight. But you can also get it in mushrooms who have been in sunlight. Um, I don't know what specific species. No, I just looked this up and I looked it in. There have been studies that show that it does, you know, being in sunlight does trigger mushrooms to produce vitamin D. Um, and, and it, I believe it said it was bioavailable. And then the same thing with B12. Uh, chanterelles, um, the king belit mushrooms or porcini mushrooms. And, uh, and a few, I believe shiitake have... Um, B12 in it too. The article I read, and I don't, I'm probably not going to go find it for you guys, sorry. <laughs> you just have to look it up too. Um, said that, that, uh, shiitakes probably didn't have, um, the amount of, you know, you know, a, a substantial amount of, um, B12 and that it would be maybe hard to get that in your diet because eating a lot of shiitakes can give you stomach aches. And I think that's true for any mushroom. You do want to, I don't know if you really want to be eating um, a lot of the same mushroom a lot of the time. It depends on certain mushrooms too, but um, you, you know, if you're eating it even once or twice a week, you're fine. Um, even probably once a day, you're fine. But there there definitely are um, bioavailable uh, nutrients that you, you would normally uh be hard to hard to find uh, if you were vegan if you're you're avoiding animal products um that can be found in, in mushrooms so it, it is i think beneficial to to think about that because there are some good nutrients in them and and uh i don't know i, I think that they're a quite a delicious food uh, if you know how to cook with mushrooms um it, it's quite it's quite fun and it's it's absolutely a fun thing to go out and find them um i like that's probably my favorite part. I I'm not that big of a fan of eating mushrooms. I love chanterelles. I love morels. Um, there's there's definitely some mushrooms that I really enjoy. Uh, but you know I'm I'm just not that huge of a fan. But I really love hunting them because it's just a fun thing to be out in the woods doing. There's a fly on my microphone. Get out of here. Um, shoot. And then, of course, I, I sell them. So it's, there's a possibility to make some money there. Um, there's weird regulations, but we'll, we'll get into that later. But that's kind of why I would say, I, I don't know, I, I think it's good to know about what's out in the woods and what kind of foods you can live on. Um, and it is really good to know about those little, you know, what has certain nutrients because B12 is very important for you. And, and so is vitamin D um, and, and you're, you know, having to do with your brain. And um, I believe... Um, believe adrenal functions with vitamin d but i don't know anything about nutrition so don't count me on that or don't hold me to that don't count me on that. I, I just use weird i i think i butcher like quotes or not quotes but uh, those little sayings and uh, i don't i don't know i don't i just go for it but anyway i think it's a valuable pastime and i think more people should be um um at least aware of mushrooms and what there is because um because part of it is that they're they're getting they are getting more popular, and and there are dangers. So and and the reason why they aren't popular is partly because of those dangers. But they are becoming 
more popular. And I, I think people should be aware of, of what mushrooms really are and what the risks are and what y- you can do to uh, mitigate those risks. Um, particularly, the, I mean, the rain risk is poison, is getting um, a toxic mushroom. There are plenty of species that will uh, cause death. I, I, I only know of a few in the Northwest and I don't really want to describe them. (laughs) You're going to have to go find them yourself, but um, uh, I would be particularly careful when you're looking for white mushrooms um, and, uh, and, and hallucinogens. If you're listening, if you're looking for psychoactive mushrooms, be careful because there are deadly um, lookalikes to psilocybin containing species that are um, like, like the deadly gallerina. Um, and and most mushrooms don't cause death. Most of them are gonna make you just sick, and uh, it's no fun to get um, you know to get food poisoning. But it you know it, it'll make you. There's there's plenty that will make you throw up, and that's usually what will happen. But there definitely are cases where people will die, um, and it's it's a bummer. So you really want to be careful with the mushrooms that you pick, and you really want to be careful with the mushrooms that you let people give you. Um, because you you need to make sure that you know that they are smart enough to know um, what they give you and that they're um, they're not taking risks because you, you can be um, you you can make a mistake and and if you have any bit of doubt man it's just it's just better just to throw it out like that's the saying is when in doubt throw it out don't eat something that you don't know and if you are going to eat a very very small amount. Um, if you're testing a mushroom to see if, because some, some people have reactions to some mushrooms and other people don't like chicken of the woods is a, is a common one or the sulfur shelf. It's like laid or something, whatever. Um, eat a very small amount and then, and then see, and don't, you know, be smart about it. You're, you, you could really, <laughs> there's consequences. And then there are other mushrooms that have uh, like heavy metals, so they they collect heavy metals out of the soil, which is a good thing for for the soil, but um, um, it's not good for you. So be careful to with those, and and just really the thing is, is just know the mushrooms that you're picking, and don't don't take take risks, guys. Um, and just for people to know, it's very if if you're looking for edible mushrooms, it's. You're, you're, I mean, you're going to find um, poisonous ones that would cause you nausea, or, or it's some of the deadly ones like angel caps and, uh, or what are they called? Destroying angels and death caps. That's what they are. Um, you'll see those ones out there, but you won't probably find hallucinogens where you're. I mean, it depends on what you're looking for, but um, the psychoactive mushrooms, the psilocybin-containing mushrooms, tend to be in like pastures, but uh, the, and in well, I, I don't know. In, on the on the coast, there's a lot, and um, like on the on the beach itself, and um, it's n- just not very much in the woods, I guess. They're there, and then in parks are usually where you would find the psychoactive. So don't you know? I wouldn't be worried about um, finding those if you're if you're worried about that getting poisoned. But it's it's the same as is uh you know anything that would be poisonous be just know know what you're looking at and uh i would be familiar i would i would if you're smart you become familiar with the deadly ones um especially um you know i can't i honestly this year i haven't maybe maintained that knowledge as much as i could um but uh you know, I, I know what the deadly lookalikes are. I know, the, you know, the mushrooms that I'm looking for. I, I, I know all of them very well. And I don't, I, I really stay away from even a lot of mushrooms that are um, edible because they have certain lookalikes that I, I'm, I'm worried about. And it's like, if I make a mistake, I'm, I'm done or I'm going to get really sick tonight. Um, I'd be careful. And I, and I have done a lot of work figuring out how to ID mushrooms. Because there's there's a very complex science to it, and I, I don't honestly understand all of the the details to IDing. Because there are, I mean, to the names for the characteristics of mushrooms is is uh, is is amazing. There's a there's a quite in depth uh, vocabulary that you would have to learn, and I, I certainly uh, <laughs> I'm certainly not able to figure it out quite yet, and I don't I don't really want to. Um, 
but I am very familiar with how to do it. Like there's, there's very important things. Like if you're going to try to ID, um, a mushroom, uh, you want to take pictures. So, I mean, I guess, first of all, how would you do, uh, what would you do to ID it? So either you're going to have a book, um, you'll have a guidebook and I wouldn't go off of your judgment with the guidebook. I would, especially when you're starting out, I would really recommend getting in a Facebook group or, or on some sort of online forum. There are some really good ones on Facebook. Um, I'll, I'll throw some links out. There's a couple for the Northwest and then I'll probably throw a couple for, you know, just the whole countries and, and worldwide. Um, that are really useful. And I would use those if you're looking at a mushroom and you're not sure what it is, um, throw some pictures up there and, and let them know some of the details. And, uh, they're usually depend. It depends on the mushroom. If it's not something that's very popular, you probably won't get as many responses. Like if you're asking, Hey, is this a chanterelle? And it looks like a chanterelle. You're more likely to get, um, a, a post then if or you know comments then if you say hey this looks like stropharia is this stropharia people there's plenty of people know that I, i'm just using weird um examples it doesn't matter um and for pictures what i would really recommend is because you got to give people the, the right pictures because if you just like show me a picture of a mushroom it doesn't I need, I need the right characteristics to be shown. I need the right details. So one thing that people need to see is the underside of the cap where the gills are. Those are the, that's where the spores come from. You know, it's the stem and then there's the cap. You can kind of tell what a mushroom is. And underneath that are the gills. You need to see a picture of the gills. Um, you really need to have a picture of the top of the cap. And it's really good to have, um, you know, a picture of the stem as well or the mushroom, you know, from side angle. And then even sometimes taking a picture just of the base of the mushroom. Um, and, and especially if, if, if you can at least let know, let people know what uh, substrate it was in, like what it was growing on, like what kind of wood it was, or taking a picture of the area it was in and, and letting people know what area it was. Some people really like to know I, uh, the elevation. Um, I've heard elevation matters, I know, but I, I just haven't been in a situation where that was the deciding factor. It's like, ah, it could have been this, but it was at 700 feet instead of 1,000, so it can't be. Uh, you know, I don't know. What, I, I don't, I've never seen that be the case, but um, some people like to know that, and some people are pretty picky because... Um, you know, people just like to, to have rules about stuff. <laughs> I don't know. So if you're going to ID stuff, I, I do recommend getting a book just so you can learn stuff, but don't rely on that. Um, the Facebook groups are much more um, safe and, 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 you know, get just multiple opinions is really good. Um, some books that I recommend if you're in the Northwest, especially would be All the Rain Promises and More by David Aurora. I will try to link that. Um, in, in the show notes as well. And then Mushrooms Demystified is a is a, a very, if you're really into mushrooms, get Mushrooms Demystified um, by David Aurora as well. Those are two really good books. And, and many guidebooks are pretty good. If you look up great guidebooks on mushrooms in your area, you'll you'll find them. Some tips on, on going out. Um, if you're going to go out and try to find mushrooms, some places to look. Uh, know the mushrooms, of course. Like, what are you looking for and where, where is it going to grow? Um, whether you're going to be in the woods or if you're going to be looking in pastures or, or the parks, um, there's, you, you know, if you're looking for chanterelles, then you're going to be in the woods. If you're looking for agaricus, campestris, then you're out in the pastures. Um, typically you're going to be in the woods. Sometimes you'll find mushrooms in parks. Um, they like disturbed areas. Like sometimes morels will grow where some landscaping was done. Um, typically, um, Typically, I don't. I, I don't know. Typically, you're, I, I'm always out in the woods. Is, is what I'm going after because I'm looking mostly for chanterelles and bolites and um, and like chicken of the woods, some like tree growing mushrooms. Like um, I'm always looking for like cauliflowers and lion's mane, and you know, there's these are things that are growing in, and on wood, and that's that's usually what I'm looking for because um, those are those are just the best tasting, and I I have I just like being out there. Um, pastures, there's a few good mushrooms to grow in pastures, but that's, you know, that they're, I don't know. I, I really wouldn't go after much, um, 
in a pasture unless you're if you're looking for something uh to make you trip that's that's really what you'll find out there but there there are edible mushrooms like agaricus campestris um in pastures but in growing in grass and stuff there's there's plenty um there's a lot of mushrooms that grow out of wood chips um Certain stropharia's grow out of wood chips. Like if you, I got lucky one year before I knew what a king stropharia was, I had one growing, and I, um, I was just as I was learning about mushrooms in our wood chip pile, and I was really bummed because I didn't know what it was. And those are a really good one, and they're pretty easy to grow. But I don't know what happened. Oh, you know what? We put those wood chips on the blueberries. I should be looking at ah, dang! I should be looking at the blueberries. Let's see what's growing there. Um, it's really important to know what laws are out there. Uh, know when, know, know what, uh, where you're supposed to be hunting and where you're not. There are places where you're really not allowed to hunt mushrooms on, on public land even. Um, and uh, just be aware. Like, like some parks don't want you doing that. Um, many private landowners won't let you. If you're going somewhere, make sure you read the signs. Make sure you know what you're doing. Um, don't get caught just for trying to find a few mushrooms because there are plenty of legal ways, uh, less risky ways to get them. Um, if you want some help finding areas to go find mushrooms, I would really consider um, talking to your local park service. Like if, you, if you're if you near any national forest, go to the National Forest Service, talk to them, and they'll, they'll give you a map. And um, if you want to buy a permit for commercial use or just so you can harvest more than a gallon, um, they'll give you permits and, and same thing with your department of forestry nearby. Just look for the public lands and, 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 you know, whoever, um, you can talk to, there's, there's plenty of corporate landowners, at least here in Oregon that you can get permits from though. They're pretty expensive. Um, and then you can of course talk to private landowners themselves. Um, I do that sometimes and say, Hey, can I, can I hunt mushrooms on your, on your property? And if you're going to do that, I would, I would recommend you, I don't know. You got to. Some people don't like it. For, <laughs> foresters and loggers aren't necessarily big fans of people who who um, hunt mushrooms because of issues with the harvesting. Like people who rake mushrooms, um, it can be really damaging to uh, the trees. Uh, so you want to be, you know, be smart about it. There's there's smart ways to harvest, and, and I'll kind of get into that towards the end of the show. Um, but first of all, the most important thing I guess about about going out and looking. Is uh, make sure that you're you're being safe because if you're going out in the woods, it's easy to get lost. I've gotten lost, and uh, it you know it was not um, a fun night uh, <laughs> to be out in the woods when it's raining. Um, lost, we you, you know it's especially when it's dark out. It's very easy to just get turned around in the woods. You know, like oh, I forget which way I came from. So it's very important to bring something like a compass with you um, or like a satellite phone if you have them and make sure you know which direction the road is in. Make sure you know which way you came. Um, I I rarely go very far off the uh, road and um, I, I try to be smart with that because, yeah, it really sucks to get lost and it, and it can happen pretty easily. Um, I want to talk about private versus public land and, and you know trespassing. It's it's not a good idea to trespass. It's almost always better if you just say if you just go like it's especially if you're if you know where the landowner is, um, just go and ask them. And and a lot of the time people will let you. Um, maybe not in the forest in the woods, um, but. Uh, other like people like farmers they'll they'll usually let you go out in their pastures and stuff um but just be be careful and be asked and be polite um because it's it's private property respect people's stuff like if if you uh, we didn't had anybody trespass looking for mushrooms on our property but if you came into my pastures you're definitely at risk um and you're a liability to me because i don't want you to get hurt by my animals but you're you're definitely a liability to yourself because you could get hurt by my animals um you need to be careful um especially around animals because animals are dangerous cows are not big and friendly um i, I don't part of one of my beefs with with uh animal rights activists is that they don't that they i feel like um 
animals are maybe treated like they're they're too innocent because animals are wild. They they um I don't know if you if you under I don't I don't know how many people understand what it actually means to be wild. Nature is ruthless, and um, although although they are fam, uh, farm animals, they are animals and they do not have morals. Uh, they don't care. They're not that. Com- they can be compassionate, but they they'll kill you, um, and they won't feel bad about it because they're animals. Um, and especially something like a cow, like a bull, who has a testosterone thrown, a lot of testosterone. They can be dangerous. They can be unpredictable. They don't have um, rational faculties. They don't really see you um, as somebody they need to respect necessarily and you need to be really careful with that uh, especially if you're if you're trespassing on people's property um there have been plenty of stories of, of mushroom farmers uh, hunters getting uh chased by uh chased by bulls and you don't want to get caught by the wrong farmer too <laughs> um if you're hunting on public land or in some on sometimes on private like corporate land um if you on cor- corporate land you almost always have to have a permit from that corporation whether it be like warehouser hancock or starker forests they always they always want a permit um if you're going up public land like state land or federal land um if you harvest over a certain amount or if you harvest with the intention to sell with commercial um, purposes then you do need a permit um legally of course, it, you know I don't I, <laughs> I I don't know of very many people who have been caught um, hunting mushrooms and and picking over the legal limit, but there are some pretty serious repercussions. I believe that you can be like kicked out of the woods for a year or something. They'll they'll definitely take away um, your privileges of of taking forest products um, if you violate that. The state will. And sometimes those permits are, are expensive, and that's kind of a pain in the ass. Like the uh, Oregon Department of Forestry charges a hundred bucks a month, which is which is crazy. Like I, when I when I did that last year, I probably out of the spot that I paid a hundred bucks for, I got two hundred bucks out of. Um, so like it, I took half of my stuff, and it's like, what does it cost them? I don't know. That's another story, guys. I don't need to get into my anarchist opinions, but uh, do know what the legal amount is, and know what you have to do if you're picking for personal use because like for morels you have to cut them in half um yeah you, you, i believe it or not you have to cut them in half um it sucks if you're gonna like stuff them so i don't know but that that's the law um so be, be careful because the rangers will will pull you over sometimes they'll check and and they'll uh they'll um they'll find you and they'll they'll tell you to leave i don't i don't know if you can get arrested for picking over the legal amount of of mushrooms but you'll definitely get a fine and it's not fun um and and also be careful with property lines too. It's good to have a map. Know know the area that you're hunting in. Sorry guys, I gotta move around and mic up. Oh, I didn't think I would make too much noise. Oh, I apologize. Um know know the property line that you're hunting on too. Cause you don't want to trespass. Some practical tips. Um, there's just some like weird things here. I just kind of wanted to cover. This will be kind of the last of it. I, don't, I hope there aren't too many other questions. If you guys have more questions, do let me know. But um, there's there's always this debate that you see come up um, with mushroom foragers. Is it's the cut versus pull debate? Whether you cut the uh, mushrooms on their stem and uh, only take you know a piece of it and and leave the bottom part of the stem attached to the mycelium in the soil or that you just like pull it up um pull the whole mushroom out of the soil um you know it's it's i think it's a stupid debate really it's it doesn't matter they've i believe they've done studies and and they didn't give i I don't i don't know look into this um but there's been no conclusive evidence that it matters um it's just my opinion that if you if you it just seems kind of weird that you would leave a rotting piece of 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 um a mushroom there attached to the mycelium though i i mean realistically mushrooms fungi have have adapted to 
mushrooms being left attached to the mycelium. So I don't think it matters if you cut, but I also don't think it matters if you pull. It's just, it just makes more sense to me that if you're going to cut it, then that's a, it's a larger wound than if you just pulled it from the soil, because oftentimes the, their mushrooms aren't going to rip up very much. When you pull them, they're not going to rip up very much mycelium because they're also adapted to that. These are, these are very, um, hardy living, um, not creatures, but you know what I mean? Like mushrooms are very hardy. They, it doesn't matter whether you cut or pull, whether you use a knife or you just yank them out of the ground. Um, one thing that's really cool. If you, um, I, I really recommend people use, um, bags and baskets that have holes in them. Like don't use plastic, um, because it's not really, you know, that'll trap moisture and, and you don't, you want mushrooms to be able to breathe a little bit. Um, so getting like a basket or, or some sort of bag that is fabric or, or, you know, loose, it has, it is, it's cool if you can let the spores spread as you carry them back, you know, you, they, they, they fall off the mushroom as you, after you pick them. And, um, then as they spread, they can, you know, they can spread. <laughs> so I think that's a really cool thing to do. Um, some, I guess some other, like some practical tips, I guess, if you're, let's say if you wanted to look for chanterelles, these are my favorite things. Um, to look, uh, a chanterelle is a, is an orange mushroom. It, they somewhat, I don't, hmm. it's pretty easy to identify because it's the golden chanterelle is just bright orange. Um, there aren't very many other bright orange mushrooms there. I, let's not say that there are plenty, plenty of bright orange mushrooms, but very few look like this. Um, gymnopolis species that are poisonous and some are hallucinogenic, um, will look like this, but they're very, they tend to be very bitter. Um, and I think the hallucinogenic ones are very bitter, so it's pretty hard to make that mistake. Um, I've never found a gymnopolis species that I, I mistook for a chanterelle. I don't find those species very often, but, um, um, they, they don't really look like chanterelles cause they have gills. Chanterelles don't have gills. They have like what we call primitive gills. They look more like a, a like ridges and they go up. Um, they're, they're kind of sometimes on the stem, um, and depending on how big the mushrooms and how, how big the chanterelles flowered out, like they'll start out as little buttons and kind of look like your regular mushroom. They kind of look more like a, a bolete. You don't know what those look like, guys, probably. Um, um, but they look more like one of your button mushrooms that you would find in the store, but not quite. But as they get bigger, they kind of flower out in those. Instead of like the cap growing as a dome, it kind of just opens up from the sides and it's more like a vase. Um, and up the the walls of the vase and the stem um are like little ridges they're kind of like little they're like a little yeah just little little short ridges that they're not quite gills and on false chanterelles i don't remember they're just a that's just a mushroom called false chanterelle i don't remember the scientific ma- name but um it uh it has gills like they're thin little gills like they look like kind of like a fish gills if you look at mushrooms with the gill versus the primitive gill that a chanterelle has um you can tell the difference so anyway, if you guys want to uh, get, if you're interested in, in foraging wild mushrooms, um, that'd be good. that's really cool. I think that's a really cool thing to do. No matter where you are, you know, throughout the world, unless you're in the, even if you're in the desert, actually, um, you can absolutely find fungus growing that you can eat. Um, and uh, yeah, if you're if you're interested, in, I really recommend going out and getting a guidebook. Um, look them up for your area. Go talk to the park service, and they'll they'll tell you. Um, tips about it you can find local meetups sometimes if you go on facebook hit those forums um hit other forums and, and of course you can you can send me a message and say hey nick i'm, I'm interested in starting out can you give me some tips um i'd love to um trying to think of anything else but yeah um just be careful guys and um if you get, if you were interested in, in, in learning more about hallucinogenic mushrooms um, and finding them, I'm, uh, I've got something on Patreon for you guys. Um, so if you want to pay me a dollar, then we can you can hear some of my thoughts on on finding those. Um, I didn't want to talk about it on the regular feed. So um, yeah, go to patreon.com forward slash j u s t y a k k i n. It's p it's patreon.com forward slash just yakin, um, and we have some Patreon content. If you throw a dollar at me, you have access to um, that episode and and uh, some other content as well. So uh, cool. Thank you for listening to this. Um, hope you have a nice day, guys. Um, gosh, yeah, I just feel like I'm missing something. I'm not. 
think you yeah no there's like there's got to be something else i was going to say something about finding mushrooms if you're going to go out and about and i said be careful say get a guidebook say go on facebook and look up online that's gotta be it i think that's it guys yeah if you're yeah that's just it um hope you have fun and uh yeah if you'd like to help out the show you can go to patreon or you can um especially give me some feedback write me a review on itunes or stitcher or google play wherever you are um listening to my work it is very helpful for you to do that um it, it makes me look um it makes me look good if you say that i am good so i appreciate it <laughs> if you do um but mean it um if you think i suck don't please don't say i suck though because <laughs> that makes me look bad anyway um there's a feedback group on facebook yakin with nick feedback group link is in the notes and so is the patreon links and all of the links for the um mushroom groups and uh and books as well so check those out and have a nice day guys